Hey, Adam. Yo. Um, have you ever noticed I'm k- kind of a diminutive gentleman? Have you noticed that I'm more whole than I should be? <laughs> I'm Adam Mattis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Coming at you from Open Studio headquarters, coming at you from our Steinway here in the studio. Yes. Well, Steinway and Sons. Yeah, who are the Sons? Well, that's... They gotta be long dead, the Sons. Right, yeah. They're onto the grandsons and even the great-grandsons. Oh, that's a good good point. Yep. Cool. Uh, You know, we we come at the piano occasionally because uh, you all like it so much and so we thought we would... We're crowd pleasers. We are. We give the people what they want. Yeah. If we're up to us, we do this at a coffee shop. (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and probably not talk as much about jazz. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, I feel like we're at, a, we're at a virtual coffee shop. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, today we're talking about the half whole diminished scale, which is why we were saying diminutive and whole. So this is Nerd Tuesday then, in other words. Is Man, what this you're is saying. Nerd Week. We <laughs> just talked right. about how to play softly on the piano yesterday. Yeah, well, that's this got is... like a romantic thing for, you know, for Valentine's this Day. Is all... This is just straight up <laughs> that's kind of nerding <laughs> out, you know. <laughs> nothing romantic. <laughs> oh, it's not playing no, softly? There's nothing romantic about piano technique. Oh, uh, you still have something to learn, something uh, to learn about the young uh, man. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Um, you know, no, uh, so we're, we're doing this week because I have watched you play lots of concerts in the past three weeks or so, starting at your uh, live stream from Mesro and then some gigs you did with Diane Reeves and Sean Jones. And uh, I kind of was taking notes for the podcast, right? Nice. Seeing like, oh, what can I get out of Peter? What, what to what do more? and what not to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, th- that list is extensive and they don't, they don't even know about that. But uh, just trying to squeeze as much right. you know, juice out of this rock as I can get. So uh, what do we got here? We got the half hole diminished. I, yeah. I saw you several times over the course of these weeks to on uh, resort to yeah. <laughs> overuse well, let's see well, how can we have, say it? you have <laughs> overextend like, you have seemingly endless ways to use the half hold diminished scale on, <laughs> on dominant chords it's really awesome and like i love that sound i don't have that sound nearly as much in my playing as i like mm. and i wonder if we could talk about you know what you're thinking of when you get We'd into be talking it. about that one right yeah that's exactly right yeah the the, the the diminished scale that you would play over like a C7 flat nine. Yes, C7, right. So, yeah, well, the first thing is, I think, you know, if you know the scale, you can jump into some kind of more advanced applications, and we'll run through some quick stuff today. But the idea is that if you're learning it for the first time, I think it's good to place it in some actual usage situations instead of just playing it on your instrument. And this is obviously with the piano, but this I think applies to every instrument for using for improvisation. Um, The things that kind of apply more to piano and guitar possibly, um, you know, is is, is like thinking about chords, which I don't necessarily do a lot, but I do play. I mean, I don't think about them connecting to the scale, but there are some nice things that fit in there. Like thinking about, about broken chords, right? Well, no, I mean, actually, like, voicings and stuff. And oh, then, but, okay. But then, yeah, correct. Like, putting them into the right hand or maybe even the left hand and breaking them up as part of a melodic thing. You I know? understand. That kind of stuff. So that seems to be the, the thing that, it, for me, provides the most variety is that you rarely are just, like, running the scale up yeah. and down, right? You yeah. have a few different ways that you you can play over it. So I'm assuming that you've worked on it in thirds, in triads, yep. in these chord shapes, right? There's yep. so many cool shapes for the half hold yeah. that you can get. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, this is one that works, that that it gets cool quicker than most of this, the other ones. Partly, I mean, it's an octatonic scale, so we have eight notes in it as opposed to seven, yeah. which is all the, the diatonic of the majors. So things that are like like the the double broken thirds or what, what broken triads, I guess you call them. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of interesting and usable in a way that that more sounds like a jaunt around a Viennese yeah. playground in the 1800s a little yeah, bit, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I think everything. I mean, there's there's more, you know, all the more advanced ones, but I think even the basic ones. When yeah, you think those, about the different directions and stuff. Hey, how you doing? Kind of, yeah, good to those see you, can man. be <laughs> extremely, extremely useful. You yeah. know, one one that I really like to think of on these diminished scale things is using, and this kind of goes back to like our secret blues scale thing, but mm. using what is like a major triad and a minor triad together. Yeah. Right? So like. Yep. Yep. You know, or yeah, the, I don't know. I'm using my right hand. That kind of thing. Yeah. Or. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. a great sound. When I like the ones you were doing there with the two, right? You know, you've got that fourth interval. That's yeah. definitely one. 
that there's a lot of cool like uh, chordal yeah, permutations yeah, 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 and then you know you're not that far off from the the uh the stravinsky kind of sound both of those because of that whole step between the fifth and the sixth they're, yeah. they're kind of different but they can be used together because I mean, all these, it's a lot of, you know, tension to go down to there, basically. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But that's such a melodic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many different kind of cool places. And what's cool about all of these shapes, but especially the four note shapes, like, what's cool about that is, and you heard me do it a little bit, is you can just, you can also just move this up a minor third. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's, you know, it's that same thing. Just keep going. Yep. Yep, and it works. Yeah, I mean, almost anything. You know, when you're starting basic, you're just actually going through the diminished. But if but if you move it up a third, I mean, minor third, we're basically going through the diminished pattern. And this being a true diminished scale, eight note scale. Yeah. Any of these kind of shapes, or even if you break them up, will work there. They don't necessarily all sound good. Yeah. But given the right situation, they can. But it'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, especially like so, I like to do things like make little melodic ideas out of it. You know, so if I'm like, uh, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Yep, like play around with that going in the minor thirds, yep. and, and that's an easy way to get around. Yeah, yeah. And then there's there's also some, you know, some interest, interesting triads that are all actually within the scale. You were just doing A and... A triad. A uh, major and E flat, e flat major. Flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like those. And they're, I mean, look, <laughs> even if they don't fall within the scale, they could still work. It's not about, like, you have to check these boxes, but they do. And so when you start to get some of these voicings, you kind of know that they can work depending on the amount of tension that you want. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about voicings using maybe some of the notes from these diminished scale. Do you yep. use... I mean, we we kind of already did one of my favorite ones, which is like this kind of sound. Yeah. You know. But do you have any that you... Uh, yeah, I love all those to? ones that, that... That or that... Like anything that has... Um, the same interval on the outside and then like a perfect fifth or perfect fourth in the inside yeah. um, usually works really well. So that, that one, you know, for sure. Um, I think this kind of... Where you got an E flat triad or an A triad. That's a little more attention. Yeah, yeah. And then here it's just like your traditional kind of um, what do you call that? Uh, what do you call that when it's the the tritone of the perfect fourth? You know. Oh, like a sharp nine thing. Yeah, yeah. sharp nine. But it's also you know like the thirteen voice. Right, 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 you know, right. Like there. A tritone sub. Yeah. Kind of thing, yeah. Okay, so these I like too. These are kind of like block chordish, where you take the same. Um, and it could be that with the two minor thirds with the perfect fourth, but I'm thinking the diminished triad and then the perfect fourth on top. Yeah. And then you just double that root on the bottom, which you wouldn't think does that much. But if you so voice hip. down on it, yeah. Yeah, take it up. You know. It's almost like a modern block chord kind of vibe because you got that octave around it. And you can resolve it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yep. And these are all like resolves to the major well. They don't necessarily resolve great to the minor for some reason. Well, it's because it has that that like natural six, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You would you would use more of like an altered sound, yeah, I think. Exactly, the, exactly. For, traditionally. Traditionally. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong, folks. There's no wrong notes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> And then I think interesting things, I'm just moving up just for fun, yeah, yeah. but like, so D flat. I definitely take advantage of like any kind of triad action I see happening totally. there. And there's tons. There's, yeah. you know, whatever, and whatever you do, there's three other options. Exactly. Moving up. Yeah. So. And then like, so we haven't really talked about, but a little bit on non-scale tones. Yeah. Which you wouldn't think you need, and you don't necessarily need, but it's still like... Uh, actually, what would I do? Yeah, that ninth, that's a real tense one. Like the the major seventh is more just sort of passing through, but the ninth, so if you... Because that's such a strong, the sharp nine, the flat nine, like that uh, gives you a lot of yeah. tension. So if you want to kind of push like double tension on it, I think the ninth is a good place. That's almost like the secret half 
Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, because you've already got the major. Do that in C again. Like you were just doing it in D flat, but do it in C. That's intense. Yeah, because you've already got the major and the minor third, so that's not really any. Yeah, but you know, thinking about it though, if you can do the ninth right as a little tense note, then that probably means you could do the same thing there, 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 right? So like the natural seventh. Yeah, to get get into it. Yep. Yeah, because you're a half step above. Yeah. And then, of course, chromatic stuff is great. It's like a bridge. So, and again, to, to, you know, what's funny about that is now we're using literally every note on the piano, yeah. right? Cause, yeah. Because <laughs> That's all I'm like, just use a chromatic. Because the half whole scale. diminished scale is already these, yeah. you know, <laughs> well, it's the whole eight concept. notes. And then if you're like, oh, but you could also throw those in. Now, we, now, 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 now we're done. Yeah. Now we're done. <laughs> Class dismissed. So, so yeah, just use just use every note. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no wrong notes. No, but that is really cool to just throw that little chromatic thing in there or lean on some tension and then Yeah, I like that. One. All right, much to shed, much to shed. Chromatic. Much to shed. <laughs> Thank you, man. That's, That's awesome. Fun. Um and then we do have a uh, you know, in our our week here we're we're just starting. I don't know if you've yeah. heard about this, but I've, we're starting to it play some tunes that we've we've gotten from our Yule Hit listeners. If you have a tune that you want to hear at the end of one of our episodes, just send it to Andrew at openstudionetwork.com. Andrew is our esteemed producer. You know, Andrew's been doing this thing that has gotten attention on, yep. on YouTube where he, he we, whenever we, on the off chance that we let a curse word slip by, yep. yeah. uh, Andrew will put in sometimes giant steps to censor it out, yep. sometimes something else. So I just wanted to experiment today just by going, shit... Well, it's very interesting because just for you folks, I'm going to do it uncensored now. So don't censor this one, Andrew. What he just said was, darn it. No, I didn't. Uh, so I just want to give Andrew uh, a little more opportunity. That's good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's been fun. I've been it. catching some of those. And the, uh, the Microsoft, so for real hardcore, yeah. um, you'll hear it, listeners. How many of you noticed the supple chimes of 1987 with the Microsoft uh, 95 reference from two weeks ago that was brilliant that was brilliant that was brilliant well done. yeah uh, nice job andrew okay so before we get into this soon though uh let's talk a little bit about rating reviews but let's not talk about rating and reviews i want to talk about our rankings oh which is man. something we've We're never climbing the chart well we never knew how to find it we <laughs> never knew about <laughs> <laughs> we literally we, we look we're like there's no other jazz po- there's other jazz but podcasts. then we checked and um, for music podcasts we are number like, we're hovering around around like 132. But that's for all music. That's all not music, just jazz. Yeah, like if, if this were like uh, the, the Billboard charts, yeah. for a jazz tune to be 132 would be unbelievably well, great. Well, it, it would never happen. It would never happen. never happen. But for us, we feel humbled that we're even so far up. But we want to break into the double digits. We want to at least overtake 131, which is the bump and grind R&B hits from the 90s. That's uh, literally what it's called. I don't know. How is that a podcast? It's anyway. one of my favorites. <laughs> it is good. It <laughs> yeah. is good. Uh, no, so, you know, we thought if, if we always ask for rating reviews and they do help, so please and continue. And people are really coming through now. We have a lot of ratings and reviews. Seven all stars. five, se- seven, sorry, sorry, yeah. seven stars. But we're going to ask you if you know a jazz musician, to tag uh, them go ahead and tag them share the podcast that you'll hear a podcast yeah. with subscribe them. and like yeah, what that's else right we're desperate over here yeah. man. send them some links and send we have something someone you love that's right yeah, and, yeah. and next week i don't know if you know about this uh having been in and out of the office recently as have i been uh we have something very exciting coming next week what am i allowed to talk about it the sponsor oh our oh. first oh, yeah, our right. second not our first our, our first, studio is yeah. our first. Is and our we'll charter. always be first in our hearts. <laughs> first so in our hearts. Yeah, yeah. Woo, that was Ooh. close. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, we um, got a new sponsor. We have a sponsor, a new sponsor, and, and we, we're not going to announce it yet because I don't know if the ink is dry on is the Is it deal. real money or are they giving us like Monopoly money? It's not about the money. <laughs> I mean, we, we don't do any of this for money. <laughs> money. Yeah, Monopoly money, exactly. Uh, that's funny. It's not about the money. It's about um, keep, keeping the, <laughs> keeping this rolling. No, but I mean, it's, it's very, okay, it's not what people are expecting. This is not going to be for like a jazz ear training app or something, although that would be interesting. <laughs> this is something that I think our audience um, I think there's already some overlap with this product and it's something that we're very passionate about and it's it's uh, not just jazz related but it's it, actually super super it's yeah. super cool it's I'm super, so excited cool. man yeah. I don't want to jinx it no jinxing but <laughs> coming next week 
Yeah, uh, well, thanks very much. Thanks for everybody who sent in uh, tunes, by the way, for our end tunes. Again, yep. Andrew at Open Studio. Oh, we didn't say what this is. No, no, this no. This is from our, fra- our friend. We yeah, David Zeltner, longtime listener, longtime uh, Open Studio member. From North Carolina. Yeah. My family's home state. Oh, nice. Yep. Uh, again, send your tunes uh, for the outro music to andrew at openstudionetwork.com. This is David's tune, Stretch. Yep. And uh, you'll hear it.